everyone have a chance to read the minutes from the last council meeting? So, no questions. Uh, I can motion to approve. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Approved. Order works is information only. Any questions? Good, because I couldn't answer them anyway. Um, <clears throat> So at this time, we'll go ahead and open up our public hearing on the 2018 budget. Is there any public comment? Okay, so at this time, we can close the public meeting. Yeah, is there any discussion or thoughts from the council on budgetary discussions that we've had? The information in your packet? All right, no. Nope. Closed. Uh, unfinished old business. Mr. Rowe, requesting permit for more than three dogs. Continue from the previous meeting. Um, I'll go ahead and start reading the uh, correspondence we had with the area plan director. <clears throat> the zoning ordinance requires kennels to have special exception approval, but only allows them in certain districts, and the residential cluster district does not allow kennels. Pretty sure Mr. Rowe lives in a residential cluster district. The code defines a kennel as a place primarily for keeping four or more adult dogs or other small animals that are ordinarily bred for sale as pets. Also could include temporary care facility for compensation, such as an animal shelter. All kennels shall have a six foot privacy fence constructed of wood or vinyl enclosing the facility in order to reduce the sight of outside stimuli to the animals and to reduce noise of the facility from neighboring properties. If he has just four dogs, the kennel definition does not apply, but if he is breeding them, it does. Um, now it's from the area plan director. Did we, were we in that district here, Shai, do we know? I did not have Casey follow up on that, but Andy and I spoke. We believe so, because usually that residential cluster is typically the west side of the city, which is the older side of the city. So normally, but we could confirm that. I texted Casey and I haven't heard back from her yet to find out if for certain that that is a residential cluster. But I'll let Attorney Perkins speak to his thoughts when he read that on versus our ordinance. That's as to the zoning issue. We have a dog ordinance irrespective of the zoning and uh, uh, what she's, at, at first glance, uh, it's easy to confuse the two. I, I think that uh, our, our requirement that he come to you if he has more than the three still holds regardless of whether the kennel intent is an issue so I think I, I read her email to say well it's not a zoning issue be, uh, a, a, as a kennel matter but it's still an ordinance issue as to the limitation on the number of dogs that we have well yeah but according to her the code, of, the code defines a kennel as four or more and we have more than four dogs here his well, last presentation, go, I believe, was go on to read that sentence, and it says four or more, and it says something about intent to sell. In her email, four other small animals that are ordinarily bred for sale as pets. Right. And we define kennel the same way, okay. but this just is not a kennel violation. If his intent is not to breed the animals or sell them then the zoning would not be applicable and it would just be our local ordinance. But if his intent is to breed and sell, then we would have to, he would have to go to the uh, BZA, the Board of Zoning Appeals, and make a case to them. So I guess it's a determination of what Mr. Rowe feels, he wants, how he wants to move forward, or his intent, I should say. Because he presented both to, to you guys at the last meeting. Isn't the issue, though, that he just wants to have more than three dogs? I think that was that at, at the issue. end of the conversation at the last meeting. I believe and that's how. Is that three dogs was the maximum. Right, because he originally had started out talking about getting a breeder's license and trying to figure out what avenue he needed to go, so that he could have the animals that he right. he wanted. Okay. So I, okay. I believe he's here tonight that he can speak to clarify that for you if you like. Mr. I, Rowe, would you like to speak? Yes, would. Two weeks ago, 
Can I state your name for the record? Just bro. <clears throat> Ted kind of hit on what he wanted me to do so you guys would follow along with this was to get some uh, letters from the neighbors and kind of go that route. What you're saying now is, is fine and dandy. I'm not trying to breed dogs. I, uh, I love dogs, so on that, I'm gonna see these, because I took my time to go out and get them. Yeah. These are my neighbors. Now I could have got about 10 more, but I, you know, I just felt that some of my neighbors, probably just like you guys, don't even know who your neighbors are. Um, and that's pretty bad, too. I mean, you go by and say hello, but to go and ask them if uh, I can have two more dogs, they could care less. I've, I've been in that house, that residence, for 20 years. So, I mean, there's not been an issue. I've had dogs since, I've had more dogs than that. There have been an issue. I have a 10 foot fence around my yard. Um, you know, there's a lot of theft, vandalism, and it's good to have dogs. They let you know what's going on. I don't know how much stuff I've had stolen. So, but I'm just following Ted's lead from what he said yesterday, last week, a couple weeks ago. Well, my yeah. understanding is the reason you're here is because there was an incident. Um, what led to that incident? How did the dog get out? That's, and I want to be real careful how I say anything like that because I'm taking that to court. And if I say something here and it conflicts in something into um, small claims court, you know, I don't know. No, I'm not here because of that. I'm here because my neighbor has 13 dogs and nothing's been done about it. So, kind of upsets me. 13 dogs. Yeah, we're, we're here talking about your six. I understand. I don't know. Uh, I'm not breeding them. I think Ted said if you guys accepted it, if one died, I couldn't have any more. As they died off, and it got down to three, that would be it. Uh, what, what are the, what breed, what, what type of dogs are they? Uh, they're, they're boxers. Boxers, all yeah. six? Yep, yeah. they're purebred. They're AKC registered. How long have you had them all? 20 years. That's a long, long life expectancy for a dog. Yeah. I've been a dog owner since I was a kid. And that's a long life. I've never had one make it that far. How long have I had these dogs? <laughs> well, they're, they're third generation. Okay. I think the issue that we have here is the ordinance that is filed. Yep, the, or and, the ordinance says yeah. if. Uh, and the ordinance says three. He needs permission from you if he's going to have yep. more, than more than three. More than three. And so then we go to the problem of. If we say no, what, what happens to three of the dogs? That's Mr. Rowe's problem. That's not ours. Or if we say yes. Then what it, was that what does that open the door to? Mm -hmm. Doesn't open it to anything. <coughs> Unless Andy, somebody else does we made do. a, we we've made decisions on other things. I know that in real estate and properties in town, it takes, believe it or not, if you are in the city limits here, you have to have an acre and a half to have a horse. And if you have Two acres, you can have a horse and a half, and that is actually the way it's written. But we also have for our ordinance that you're allowed three dogs, not All right. four, All right. not three and a half. All right. And it just to change the ordinance. I just I think we have to stand by what we have written is what's been on record. I, I will say in the past, there's been two instances that we have gave special permission to have uh, on 
to uh, property or to animal owners or people within the city to have more than three dogs. Uh, both of them were special circumstances. One was a fostering uh, facility. They were fostering next we dog. Just, uh, that has nothing to do with this, all right? Right. Um, so no. what we did is if you, when you guys approved that, I created a, basically I type up an actual permit through my office and present that so, and also give that copy to the police department so they have a copy of it as well um, if the council approves it. But that's another circumstance right. that we're not right. dealing with. Right, but what I'm saying, the ordinance says that we have to have a permit. We have to do the permit. So what I'm saying is if you approve it tonight, I will type that's up what the we're permit. Discussing. Mm -hmm. Andy, have we had any calls about the dogs other than this one incident that we've, I've heard about? Yeah, we've had two incidences in the last six months or so, I would say. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, um, and then since our last meeting, we did have another incident uh, where one of the dogs, who was it? I don't remember off the top of my head, I didn't look and I apologize, but we did have, since you know, since our last meeting, we had, it was no. a topic of discussion, a call, with, we received a call. Oh, right before we had the meeting, correct. Before we had the meeting, there was, there was a, a woman walking her little grandson across the street and the puppies got excited and ran across the road and wanted to say hi. While well, they said hi, knocked the little boy down. <laughs> not, not, no perp, it's just puppies. And uh, so the, the grandmother just uh, had some choice words and said, why don't you uh, blank blank have them dogs on a leash? And I said, it takes time. You just don't put a dog on a leash. You have to train them. So. We understand that you told us that at the last meeting, this, you told us this at the last meeting, so it obviously happened before our last meeting, because I remember that story, but they went out through the screen door. And, that was before well, the well, meeting. Before the meeting, right? Yes. So that's happened since? Yes. We've so had there, we had another time. report since the last meeting. Yes, and that is part of the problem, is that do have them outside out front and they're not on leash from time to time. <clears throat> and that is against the ordinance also. I train my dogs without leashes. My dogs can walk on the side of me without a leash. And it's just, uh, I try to teach them hand controls and, and it just, I try not to use a leash unless I'm taking them out somewhere. Taking them out to like Goodwill and then out in that little pasture out there. I let them run. And our issue tonight is? Are we willing to grant permission to have more than three dogs? All I want is one more dog. Um, it's going to put me in a situation if you say no I, I respect it but it's just you know these dogs won't go to anybody else so then I gotta euthanize it if you ever euthanize a dog you know what I'm talking about mm -hmm. it's not easy dogs have never bit anybody it's not saying I don't believe they ever would I mean I play rough with them and <coughs> I don't think you've ever had anybody call in saying one of my dogs got out and bit somebody. I don't believe we've ever had a bite report. Not in 20 some years. <laughs> but I'm not perfect, but I try. Um, so where do we go, guys? We, so. May I ask for clarification? You just said you're asking for one more dog. So you're asking for add but seven. you're actually the the limit is three. Right. So you're asking for three above the limit. No. So total of six, or are you asking no. for a total of four? I'm asking for four. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, weren't there six last meeting? There's two puppies. So those are included in the count, I hope. Um, you know, the puppies. Uh, I think I'm going to sell. You still have them on your premise? Yes. So this would be six dogs. Four, I mean, as, as, as. It would be six dogs. Yeah, it would be six. But the police have told me 
But a dog catcher told me that I can keep these two puppies up until six months to do training and everything without being non-compliant with the law. my dog. Somebody's calling in trying to start trouble. I'll have to look it up. All right. There's only been two. Uh, well, are we willing to grant permission or are we going to let it say no? I apologize. Did anyone else hear about the dogs? Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? No. I said we were looking at the um, puppies. I thought I had read somewhere in the ordinance about if he's planning to sell the puppies, that that would be an exception. Um, I'm going to try to sell them. Right? I'm, I'm not going to give them away. And, uh, I've got too much money wrapped up in them. And you could always put stipulation on there, too. Motion, no one makes it. That's okay. your answer. So, and the ordinance stands correct. Yeah, the, or the ordinance stands correct. Right, and there's no motion permit. to amend your or allow him, grant him permission to have more than three dogs. All right, so dies for lack of a motion. So, three dogs is the limit. Okay. Thank you. Yep. If I could, um, could we get some guidance on a time frame? Um, I mean, I don't want to go write the guy to take it tomorrow. But I, would everyone have a problem with next by next meeting getting down to compliance, or are we saying he's already had that because we can't? I only kind of state it. Sounds like he's got a couple of puppies to sell. I would say the next meeting. By the next meeting. To move the puppies. Well, and hopefully, the puppies don't have to get on for one of the other dogs. Mm, yeah, the because puppies don't have to be sold, that. though. That's right. By the next meeting. So they have we're six doing months, right? Yeah, by the next meeting. meeting. But wouldn't the puppies have three more months to be sold? No. According to the ordinance? No, I didn't find any reference. Okay. No, there's okay. no reference. Okay. Unless that's in the yeah, zone. Three month old puppies ready to be sold. Yeah. yeah. All right, thank you. So by next meeting. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Okay, other business. Stormwater update, Randy Williams. But the only thing on the stormwater is that they're done with the survey and it's been turned over to Donahue to start the solid which will take, uh, I believe, one to two months. So that's where it stands right now. Okay. Do we have any questions? No. Nope. Great. Thank you, sir. Brief, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the other old business was withdrawn. It was the 
public facilities grant for the Time Theater. Um, on to department head reports. Chief Butler, you want to start us off? You're first on the list. Uh, Ryan, before you move on, uh, the stormwater conversation, uh, I will need some direction from the council on the Paul uh, Fleischman, I believe is his name. Uh, he was going to come in and review the stormwater records and look at both of the contracts. <coughs> he spoke to Ted today, said he was ill, wasn't going to be here this evening. I need some direction on whether to add that to the next. He has to be put back on the agenda for next month. And I need, he has not came in to review yeah. those records as of today. So I yeah, need some direction. Yeah, but we can need to come in and review them before it because we can't just keep drawing this out. Well, that's, that was why I'm telling you. Um, I, if he does not come in to review those records by the time I'm ready to send council packets out, I will not put it on the agenda. Okay. Um, but there, if he comes in in between that time, then I can amend the agenda and send one out. I just want to make sure that you guys are okay with that. I agree with that. That's good. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. Uh, yes. Sorry, Clint. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan's. He just keeps it moving. <laughs> good evening. For the month of July, we had 61 runs, and they were consisting of stretch fires. One in the city calls for smoke. One in the city. Had a landfill fire, Newcastle Township. Auto fire alarm six in the city. Brush fire one in Rochester Township. Mutual aids one in the Liberty Township, two to Union Township. Had a utility pole fire in the city. Accidents, we had two in the city, two in Rochester Township, one in Richland Township. Medical assist consisted of 19 in the city, nine in Rochester Township, one in Newcastle Township. Had a water rescue, one in the city. Lift assist, four in the city, one in Rochester Township. We did a CO check in the city. We did two service calls in the city. Canceled calls uh, consisted of three in the city, one in Rochester Township, and we conducted one drill. Pending your question, that concludes my report. Any questions? Thank you, Chief. Thank you all. Chief Shots, you're next. All right. <laughs> I'll make it quick. Uh, the month of July, we had 20 accidents. Three of those were personal injury. We issued 32 total warnings, 75 offenses, 57 total case reports, 776 calls for service, 34 lockouts, five towed vehicles, and 17 people incarcerated. Then you have the crime that those people are allowed for. <clears throat> Any questions for Chief Shots? Thank you. Oh, our, our officers, new officers that we hired started this week also, just so you guys know. Uh, both, of them, both of them started Monday. Were they taxi on the now? Or are they going no, to they're in training right now. Academy. Oh, no, they won't go to the academy until next year. Cool. Thanks, Thanks Steve. Lauren's not here. Uh, that would be Randy. Randy. I forgot to change that. I apologize. Thanks a lot, Sean. Hey. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Keep you, make sure I <clears throat> catch my own mistakes. <laughs> At the wastewater plant, the lab has done their normal testing. Uh, the plant, we mowed the plant, Lions Club, Railroad Depot, and we transferred sludge to the drying beds. Collections. We did locates, mode lift stations, we cleaned the silkway on 4th Street, and we assisted the water department on 18th Street Water Tower. We pumped out the pit so that they could get in and service on it. 7th Street projects on hold when they did the jack and bore, the casing was six inches off grade, so they could put the, the carrier pipe in. And right now we're waiting for them to come back with a new uh, plan. They got to submit a plan on what they're going to do. They're planning on putting in a 30 inch casing and moving three to four feet south. But uh, we're waiting, like I said, for the plan to get to Commonwealth. Uh, Bunnell is surveying on 4th Street for that project. And then the plant. The Commonwealth has verified the bids for the phosphorus removal and supernate pump station, and the notice of awards has been signed and sent back. That's all I have. Do we have any questions? Any 
survey questions. Right. Do you want to do Derek's report, John, or well, wait till you're is he on vacation? Sort of. He <laughs> sort of. Um, his, he had a uh, family um, issue tonight. He had to Good. handle. Well, that's fine. Alrighty, well, they, uh, the meeting, of course, went well on August the 7th. Board approved minutes. Update by Derek was on the board that everything was operating as normal. An update was presented by Derek to the board that, that Dictionary Engineering performed the tower inspections on the Lake Tower and the 4th Street Tower. Uh, Dictionary Engineering also performed an inspection on the new plant aerator. An update was presented to Derek to the board that the small salt tank is completed. I know that they do have all the painting done over there also. If you want to stop in and take a look, it really, it really does look nice, and all the stainless and the new paint is very nice. Uh, Derek was uh, asked the board to hire a new full-time employee, and uh, the reason for that being that uh, he was being called out when certain inspectors were there at the plant, and he felt it was really his job to be at the plant when the inspections are going on, and it's too dangerous, and I told him that safety is, of course, should always be our first issue as far as to having one person in a pit even to go to see what's wrong. It, there should not be one person on the job. Uh, so Marvin, they, they made a motion to table this discussion and they'll bring it back up at the next meeting and discuss things again with him. Uh, One of the main important things that they asked about, and I'd heard a little bit earlier because I had asked, uh, I'd asked Shada before this meeting about how the double billing went that we went through, and it really did go a lot smoother than anyone expected. I did not, I don't think anybody expected it to go as well as it did, but due to all the information that they put out, the letters that were in the billing, and that they did have it in the, on the, uh, in the newspaper, explained to everybody what was going on and there were very, very few problems on that. And then Derek told about uh, people that were taking uh, vacation in the month of August, none were taking it in August. Um, monthly duties for the month of July were discussed and uh, no other business going on and Marvin dismissed the meeting. It was past 3 out. Any other questions about what's going on at the water plant? Things seem to be going very smooth. Derek did and provide we that. also are staying on. They came back, uh, Duke Energy, just in case they're watching on TV. Uh, they came back. We've been on them every month since they tore all the ground up behind there, putting the new high lines in. They did come back and graded the ground, they put some dirt in it. They have not seen it, got taken care of. But I, we've all told Derek just stay on them and they're going to get it done before fall. And so we'll have a nice looking yard again next spring. Have any questions for John? All right. You ready, Lenny? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> At the street department, we uh, are trimming back uh, where the buses have had trouble with the limbs and breaking lights and stuff. Uh, and problem seeing at the intersections like 4th and Main. 10th and Main, 10th and Pontiac, um, 5th and 6th and J, etc. Um, we've been chipping brush and picking up brush. Um, we ran the recycling route. We've been loading out compost. We've got about half or uh, two thirds of that uh, loaded out and gone, so that's a plus. Um, we ran the downtown trash receptacles been watering the flowers uptown in the trees and also we've been asked to water the south side of the dam area uh, patched a couple holes with some asphalt uh, we've been working on signage um, we dug up 10th of Pontiac there was a hole developed in, in the street and uh, I thought it was a uh, hole by the manhole but um, as we got that exposed it was a old abandoned um, line that went to the uh, across the street to the other manhole so um, it was no longer in use 
So we plugged it with concrete and we backfilled it with pea gravel and 73s. So we'll wait for that to settle real good. And um, that's about all I have for the park, uh, the street. Um, and as Mason wasn't at the park board meeting, I'll kind of touch base on a few things that's been going on at the park is uh, we got uh, all Manitowoc Mountain's been uh, power washed, uh, sealed all but the inside of the fence. Um, we got the uh, been, been mowing. Um, we got about half of the frisbee golf uh, signs made, and we will be putting them up tomorrow. Um, and uh, that's about all that's been going on out there, uh, as we've had guys off and on on vacation. I have a question, Lee. Yeah, and this is still with the street. Whose responsibility is it in the alleys? And I've been kind of like people's nearest nosy neighbor. I drive up alleys every once in a while. And whose responsibility is it to trim the trees and stuff that are coming out into the alley? Is that city or is that yeah, the us. That's us? Okay. So it's, it's just like uh, we have so much of a right away like on the streets. Sure. Whether it be 10, 15 feet in the center of the road. So it's kind of a most of the time, yeah, it's our, we, we've been running through them as time allows oh, for us. We, we got most of the west side done and uh, started in on the east side in some spots. Any other questions for me? Thank you. Okay, moving on to committee reports. Area Planning Commission. Uh, yes. We haven't had a meeting yet. It will be Monday, the 8th, which is next Monday at 7 p.m. Okay. Um, moving on to FEDCO. <coughs> okay. FEDCO did meet on uh, August 3rd. Um, for a checking account balance 16,152.43, operating reserve balance 72,547.99. Uh, they did present their budget request to the county, uh, waiting for them waiting for the info on that. Um, the project, the Frank Bowley project, um, he had a building here, it has been sold, so now he's kind of looking for another location in Rochester, but um, his original plan is kind of gone to the wayside. Um, last week of uh, July, <coughs> Mayor and Ted went to Illinois to meet with Caterpillar Caterpillar is looking at putting an assembly plant in Georgia, Indiana, and Arizona. They looked at existing buildings and spec buildings in Indiana, haven't found what they're looking for, so CAT's looking to, for new construction. They need a 48,000 square foot building with 30,000 additional square feet for staging outside. Uh, the new facility would employ 85, 70 hourly, 15 salary. They need highway access. Um, as their loads will be 140,000 pounds on a 53-foot trailer. So that'd be a big project and we're looking for that. Um, Highway 31, Terry, uh, Ted, and David Heidi went to a meeting with NDOT and were informed at that meeting there are no changes planned for Fulton County in the next five years except for efforts to increase safety and access. And that is the FECO report. Anyone have any questions? All right, park board, Mason. Park board. As Lenny said, I wasn't able to make it because middle school tennis started. And I'm coach, I'm actually missing the first match right now. So hopefully they're doing all right. <laughs> but uh, I've got the minutes here. So Lenny went over first part. I'll talk about the pool and the golf course. Um, and a little bit about the disc golf. Um, the, there were a lot of people at the meeting apparently um, in favor of the disc course that are liking it, everything's going well. Um, they would like to get the tee pads done and the whole signage to indicate, but it sounds like we're working on all those things. Um, Lyle got some quotes for seal coating the cart paths on the front nine. Looks like they are. Did you guys accept that? No. 
Okay, well, you're, they're looking to re recoat the front nine, and he's going to get equipped with the back nine as well, just to um, seal coat the cart paths. Um, Lori's looking to have the rough area of the concrete of the pool ground down. Um, she also is talking to Casey Coles. We're going to be talking to Casey Coles to begin developing a plan to get the uh, renovate the bathrooms and make sure they're ADA compliant. Um, next month, Park Board will be meeting at the Beach Pavilion and looking at a potential spot for a volleyball court out by the beach. Correct. All right. And lastly, um, fans of park bathrooms are looking to also renovate and bring 288 compliance as well. Um, on the pool, is it weekends only already in the last days, August 27th? That was worded a little funny. Yes. Okay, so it's it's still weekends only and the last day will be August 27th. So this weekend. Golf course numbers, um, again, Trend's been staying the same. Highest revenue we've had in the last four years. Um, 13 and 12 are still higher, um, but we're we're not far behind 2013 numbers, which were pretty good. And pending any questions, that concludes my report. Any questions for Mason? Probably can't answer them, but luckily we have here. So, um, chair's not here. Mark's not here. So solid waste and animal adoption center. Chase. We didn't have enough um, people for a quorum for the solid waste meeting. Um, a few things though to note, um, the tractor that we had put on auction ended up selling um, to a guy in North Carolina for $22,000. Um, so we got that sold. And So far, they sold uh, 1,949 orange bags, of which 914 were purchased by city residents, and 1,035 were purchased by county residents. We have collected $1,529 for disposal of bulk items. Um, and according to the mayor, the city of Rochester is ending curbside pickup at the end of this year. And then a couple of things for the animal shelter. Um, the new building is pretty much complete. Um, ended up spending about 202000 on everything. And then we also approved a, um, a loan for the animal shelter as well because our funds were kind of depleted for the um, new building. So we ended up getting a loan for 15000 to cover some of the expenses and have some money in our account. Other than that, that's about it. <coughs> Any questions for Chase? EMS, Brian. Tree board met on the 3rd of August and general discussion was the, the ongoing matter about the uh, trees need to be trimmed, replanted. So we've got the, the list going for that. Uh, there was an issue, of, not issue, but a question about a tree on or where the, the dugout restaurant was. And uh, too late to get onto that last list that was already out. And uh, but it was also small size and made out of it worth to bid it out. We talked to Lenny and they got it done the next day. So that had done and gone. Hopefully not that we're in the, the, the real estate business, but the building is for sale and that may look nicer than if someone goes look at it and then see a dead tree out front. Hopefully that'll help them the city as well. The uh, another matter they talked about was the tree city signs that we have. I think there are three in, in coming into the city, and they're looking at replacing two of them. Uh, there's one that's on the south side of town, which I think that either a truck had run over it or the, the you know, guy cut the grass and knocked it over. So they're looking at getting that replaced as well. 
they also have the uh, each year that we continue to do it we get a sticker that says 16 17 18 years so we're going to get the uh, the current sign once the new signs are up we'll put the, the current stickers on so like for example so that would look good and, and they're continually getting requests from citizens about dead trees bad trees or whatever so they're constantly looking at that as well I've got some pre-board. Any questions? Okay. EMS report is short. Didn't have a meeting. Next one I think will be in October. Okay. Good job. Questions? No questions? <coughs> All right. Downtown partnership. Can you hear you filling in for Sarah? Um, economic Vitality uh, received the preliminary leakage report from IUK. Uh, Mason had suggested that we move it from this week to the FEDCO board meeting. I just got confirmation today that the team is able to do that, so we will look at putting that with the FEDCO board meeting uh, just to share the preliminary uh, leakage report and the findings there. So instead of having, having it at the county council meeting, we'll have it at the FEDCO board meeting. Um, working on the brewery project uh, so I believe that they're looking at closing on Friday uh, from an email that came so that is working itself out uh, design committee chair Harry Webb presented to the county commissioners on Monday uh, requests for funding for the bike racks and benches around the courthouse for six thousand five hundred dollars um, from what I understand the county commissioners approved and will move that to the county council to see if they will actually agree to that funding. That will happen in the near future. Um, said waiting for a decision from the city regarding funding for the bike racks um, so that the grant application can be completed and submitted to the community foundation. Uh, proposed DEG matching funds, which will be part of the uh, budget, I guess, conversation. Uh, she said that this will ensure that increased traffic from the new pilot Flying J station will not be lost opportunity allowing full opportunity for increased traffic. So looking at that to see if that will be moved forward. Um, and then they are going to meet, uh, per Terry's request, about an Alway's art and parking lot improvement um, grant that is available and it will be researched and plan included in the 2018 Rochester Downtown Park Partnership Strategic Plan if they feel that that is something that's essential um, and they move forward with that as discussed and Living Local Fest, working with a collaborative effort between the Rochester Downtown Partnership, the Chamber, and actually met with the Moose here a couple weeks ago, are looking at what date that that would make sense. And most likely, if we hear confirmation, they are moving, uh, the Moose has requested that we partner with their ski show versus with their boat parade. So looking at a July date for that, um, finalizing the details for that, um, and then Sarah said that she will be meeting with Stephen Ray on 828 to work on the 2018 Rochester Downtown Partnership Strategic Plan. Um, a date will be determined to include multiple organizations and the 2018 plan, um, and that will work to uh, ensure um, collaboration between those organizations. So that date will come out, and that would be between FEDCO Redevelopment, um, Rochester Downtown Partnership, and the theater group. And then she and Terry and the FCLA met about a co-working space to figure out where that would be potentially for the Rochester Downtown Partnership's office and moving forward with that. And then um, working on a request from uh, the FEDCO board about the part-time position and finding uh, some research and updating job description. So that is basically everything I have on the sheet. So. Any questions? Um, I apologize to everyone. I completely skipped over communications. Does uh, anyone have anything I need to bring? The only thing I did fail to mention for the budget, did you guys notice the note that I had in your packet about the circuit breaker? Okay. Um, on, I, it was not on the sheet. Uh, it doesn't break it out but I wanted you guys to know what the circuit breaker impact was going to be for each one of our funds. The
the general fund is going to see a $79,000 hit. Motor MVH, which is our street department, 42,000. The cumulative fire, 3,200. The parks, 40,000. 255 and our CCD is 8,000. So those are right now the estimated impact of revenue loss to each one of those tax supported funds. I apologize, I saw my paper after I flipped through and got everybody else's off of there. <laughs> You'll send that to us this week, won't you? It should have been in your packet. If you, do you have your packet copy? I'm just going through it on the ordinance. It's, it, look, it would be this one? And it was, I hand wrote it on the left hand side. Okay. Do you, if, if it's not, I'll resend it, scan it, please resend it to you. Okay. Um, any ADA concerns? And do you have anything? I do have some. Okay. Uh, I want to tell you uh, one of the things that uh, Mayor Denton has me working on is kind of examining the. Uh, Various ordinances the city of Ro city of Rochester has to address problem properties, typically re problem residential properties. Uh, you can very loosely you can think of uh, we will pursue those now is divided into to three areas. You have you have uh, nuisance ordinances, you have unsafe building ordinances, and then you kind of have other ordinances. Uh, the, the the dog issue would be another another ordinance that, that doesn't. Property. Uh, in particular, he wanted me to look at the, the model the city of uh, Warsaw has put together, and uh, uh, I looked at their their ordinances, uh, and uh, I uh, uh, would summarize that as saying they're more detailed. Uh, there's also, I would say, a significant amount of overlap between their nuisance ordinances and their unsafe building ordinances. They kind of bleed together in a lot of ways. There are a lot of there are a lot of uh, problems you could have with a, with a property that could be pursued under either or both those uh, sides. Uh, the most important, for, for the mayor's goals, I think the most important difference would be the city of Warsaw has a category uh, called substandard buildings. Buildings that might not rise to the level of unsafe building ordinances, or be, not rise to the level of being a violation uh, of an unsafe building, but uh, could have uh, other problems, including many internal problems. Uh, you may have heard Casey mention once or twice that she really doesn't get into buildings when she does a write-up. Um, for example, uh, uh, the police should have a reason to be into a building and find that there's a, a lack of hot water. Um, traditionally, I think in Rochester, that's been an issue for the health department in the county. Well, it doesn't have to be. The, the city can can write uh, uh, an ordinance that is duplicative of that and addresses everything from the uh, one Warsaw addresses everything from uh, uh, vermin to lack of sewage connection to uh, uh, a whole host of environmental ordinances involving the appearance, uh, refuse, and, and that type of thing. And I think that what the mayor wants to do is make sure the city of Rochester has the tools built into its ordinance to do that. And uh, we're going to be having discussions over the next probably a couple of months uh, with Casey's office, with Chief Shots, about okay, if we it doesn't do a lot of good to expand these ordinances and not have a plan for enforcement. Will we enforce it much the way we do now, uh, where the uh, police uh, and not an independent uh, code bureau, but the police are responsible for writing those ordinance violations? And uh, or uh, uh, can we find a way to expand the relationship we have with the plan administrator's office and have some of those handled there? So I, I bring that to your attention just to let you know that's that's you know a lot of a lot of things I work on aren't appropriate uh, to discuss at a public meeting, but I want to let you know that uh, Ted had me working on that. Um, I went out Monday and, and watched uh, some some hearings that Warsaw does. Uh, Warsaw doesn't take those code, types of code violations to their city council. Uh, they would have too many. The council meetings would, would last a very long time. They hire a hearing officer, who's usually uh, uh, someone who is a licensed attorney, but also has experience doing uh, doing uh, municipal law. And that hearing officer, uh, uh, if you've ever been in a setting where there's an administrative law judge, like an unemployment hearing or something, a uh, hearing officer for the city would have a very similar function. 
their, their job is to make a record and to rule on the, the, the city's uh, allegation of the uh, 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 violation. And so um, that may or may not be something the city wants to consider down the road. Uh, it, it's not something you have to set up to do every month. But if you ever got to the point where the city got very aggressive about uh, writing those kinds of ordinance violations, uh, uh, a part-time hearing officer brought in uh, every couple of months or once a quarter might make sense because it could take some of the burden of doing that out of the council, but you, you don't have to. It's one option. But I wanted to see the interplay, how that worked in a, uh, in a hearing officer setting for those kinds of violations. Um, and if you, as, as we, we look at the compar comparison of the ordinances, and, and eventually I think there'll be a, a draft the, the mayor will want to propose to the council, uh, that would make some changes to to our both nuisance and ordinance and probably come up with a substandard building uh, definition in our own ordinances. If there are things that you think about uh, that you want to uh, throw out, send me an email, bring to my attention, hey, we need to make sure uh, uh, we have a way to address this kind of problem. For example, uh, uh, just to pick kind of one out that's particular, there, the Warsaw Ordinance has a uh, traffic hazard nuisance violation. In other words, um, not only if, if uh, a traffic hazard is created, can you write the individual who created it up as a nuisance, but this is designed so that you can write the owner of a parcel up as an ordinance violation. And the reason that's more useful is anytime you can write up the owner of a parcel, you have the potential of using the tax sale to, to force compliance and payments. So if I had a parcel and um, uh, uh, let's say the uh, uh, I had construction spilling over into the street or uh, uh, I have a tree down that it fell in a storm and I just won't address it, um, you can uh, uh, write that up as a specific nuisance to what it does to the traffic pattern. So, there's some things there that I think that uh, are going to be worth consideration. I just want to let you know the mayor and I are kind of looking at those things. And if you if you think of something uh, that falls under the category of problem properties and, and you would like to see that addressed in a, in a future change to ordinances, let me know. Questions? Question. Yes. Yeah. Um, with these problem properties, would any of, of these problems or issues still remain under the realm of the health department, or then would it fall on the city? to well, control all of them. Uh, writing an ordinance that addresses things that health code uh, sections also address would not relieve the health code of its obligation. Uh, <coughs> when I talked to one of the uh, uh, ordinance bureau <coughs> folks in Warsaw, uh, I, I observed a hearing where, where one of the city uh, employees who, who's in charge of writing up these code violations uh, mentioned that he was at the house with a health department employee and so I asked upstairs so how does it work does he does he call and say hey, I'm gonna get it I'm gonna get an opportunity to see that house on such and such a street that's such an eyesore <coughs> you want to come along and they said yeah sometimes it works that way and so uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't take a burden belonging to the health department and place it on us what it would do is say uh, if you have that kind of problem property, you can get written up by the county health department, or you might get get written up by the city of Rochester. It, it'd be an either or. You see so what I'm saying? that like double duty for those two entities? Is, is it you'd be double jeopardy <laughs> for them to? Um, in, in some cases, but there are, there are a lot of situations like that where where both the city and the county may have a prohibition against something. Uh, if if we had a if we had a homeowner up here who had a kennel and it was not licensed and it happened to be in a residence where they had nine dogs, it would be a violation of uh, 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 two ordinances. Um, and uh, so it's not it's not unusual, uh, and I think that's more common in more metropolitan areas. Um, I I certainly would want to go into it with the understanding. That we promote promote the understanding of the health departments to say, listen, we're we're not doing this to to take on duties that belong to you, and nor could we. I mean, we don't have the jurisdiction to tell the health department you don't have to do this anymore. Okay? And so, but but I think the people who who design Warsaw's ordinances 
looked at the synergy that comes with being able to go in and say, look, if I see nine problems with a house, it's not efficient for me to say, I'm going to write you up for three. Maybe somebody in the health department will get here and write you up for the, for the others. It, it's more efficient if they have an opportunity to bring all those to the, to the forefront. I think you just have more tools at your disposal. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> yes, do we have one ordinance on the agenda? Yes. And if any of you still have your paper copies of your code books, I have your copies in my office. an ordinance enacting and adopting a supplement to the code of ordinances for the city of Rochester and declaring an emergency. I entertain a motion for the second reading ordinance number 4-2017. an ordinance enacting and adopting a supplement to the code of ordinances for the city of Rochester and declaring an emergency. All right. I'll entertain a motion for the third and final reading of ordinance number 4 2017. Ordinance enacting and adopting a supplement to the Code of Ordinances for the City of Rochester and declaring an emergency. All right, I'll entertain a motion for the adoption of Ordinance Number 4 2017. you have who has a hard copy of our code of ordinances I do. I am. John do you have one still yes I do the blue cover yeah yeah Karen did you ever pick one up mm -hmm. okay. and you don't have one. Okay. I will look because I think yours are in the conference room so I'll put the supplements in and get those to you guys mm -hmm. do you want your supplements tonight or just whenever okay. Oh, really? <laughs>